Hello everyone, this is Jim from Small Time Outlaws again, and welcome back to my tutorial series on beginning game programming. This is a, the third video, and in this video we'll be extending our knowledge of functions and variables. So we'll be covering function overloading, as well as default parameter values, and we're also going to quickly go over some things I forgot to mention in, in the previous video, namely global and constant variables. Uh, so let's begin real fast, open up Monk and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is create a global variable. I'm going to scoot everything down. And the thing about global, var global variables, you need to keep them outside of any method or function. Otherwise they won't work. So we're going to declare it with the global keyword. And what the global keyword does is tell Monkey that this variable needs to be accessible anywhere in the program. So we're going to initialize this with 255 and once you've created that you guys I'm going to show you right now is you can go ahead and use it in any anywhere else in the program doesn't matter. So I'm going to go ahead and stick it in an add function real fast so you can see once we send number to this add function it's going to take value 1 and add glob to it which is 255 and return that sum. So uh, we run it, wait for the result, there you go, 269. Okay, and that's pretty much it for globals. So the next type of variable I want to show you is the constant variable. Uh, constants also have to be declared outside of any function or method. So we will quickly just give it a random name. Constant V, and you see I did it all caps. Lots of programmers do all caps. I do all caps for constant variables, but you don't have to. There's plenty that, it's plenty of people don't. If you don't like it, don't do it. Develop your own style, you know. And the th so the thing about constant variables, they are global, but you can't change them after you initialize them. So when you create them, you have to initialize them with something. And then once you've done that, you can't change it. So if you see, I try to go down here and change constant V. Two, five. Try to run it. Boom. Monkey says no. You cannot. So I'll get rid of that fast. And let's go ahead and change this back. So that's it for constants. I'm going to show you a real nice use for constants later on. Right now, it might not be making too much sense to you, but they do come in handy. And the last thing I forgot to mention in the previous video was returning expressions from functions to kind of slim them down a little bit. So instead of creating this sum variable, then assigning the sum variable, and returning the sum variable, you can just throw this mathematical expression in the return statement line and get rid of everything else. So what that's going to do is just add these up and then return them. That's that's just one more trick to make your code look a little well some would argue that it makes it look worse harder to read but I like to keep it nice and slim like this keep the functions small if they're if they're simple functions like add just do this alright so now to the meat and potatoes of this video starting with function overloading now the purpose of function overloading Okay. So you might be thinking, what do you need function over? Well, what is it? First of all, okay. Now you might be thinking, what? What are you talking about? What's function overloading? Now you might be thinking, what is function overloading, and why do we need it? Well, let's say you wanted to instead of adding two ints together you wanted to add two floats together what would you do? well you might create another function and call it say add floats so you want to add some floats together instead of ints and you want it to return a float and you want it to take the same variables in except they've got the float type now so we're going to create those real fast and we will return value 1 plus value 2 and close the function block now this works just fine provided you're going to always be keeping track of which 
types of variables you're going to be adding together. Uh, and so what overloading allows you to do is keep your code a little more uniform. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the floats out of add floats. And then you might be thinking, well, these functions have the same name. Monkey's going to be confused. Well, turns out monkey defines variables as well as most programming languages define not variables sorry but functions and methods as not just the name but the name combined with the types that are coming in so in this case monkey sees this that's not just add but it sees it as add int int it sees this function as add float float so when you call add down here and monkey sees an int here and an int here it's going to call add int int so, but if we were to change this here to decimal which we def declared as a float and we could leave this as six I'm going to go over that later but we're going to change this to 2.5 and now, now monkey sees this is add float float it's going to reference this function so what this also allows you to do is say, let's say if it's two floats being added together, you wanted to change the functionality a little bit. Let's say multiply this by two. It doesn't really make mathematical sense, but so but what this does, is you can streamline streamline your code, keep it uniform, but also do you know different things based on which types of variables are being passed around. And that's function overloading in a nutshell. So the next thing we're going to cover is default parameter values. And this is kind of related to uh, function overloading. You're kind of overloading in a way. I'm going to show you this right now. So let's say let's say we wanted to give this add function a little more functionality, make it a little more useful to you. So when you add, you say you want to just pass one variable or one number, number in this case, and when you do that, it only adds one to the numbers. So this allows you to, you know, increment certain values by one. Well, all we're going to do is give the value to parameter declaration an initial value of one. And so what monkey's going to do is when you call add and you give it only one integer parameter, it's going to first check for an add function with one int. And if it can't find that, it's going to search for the next best thing, which is an add function with the first parameter as int and then the remaining parameters all have default values like this one up here. So it's going to actually call this function send number in as value 1 and then value 2 is going to be set to 1 and that's just going to add 1 to the number. And so we'll see it in action. And there you go. As it adds 1 to 14 makes 15. And that pretty much covers everything I wanted to go over with this tutorial. Uh, so I hope you learned something. And join me in the next one. I think we're going to be going over going over operators and typecasting. It's pretty exciting stuff. So yeah, thanks for watching this video. And once again, if you have any questions or comments, put them down below. Or you can email me at jim at smalltimeoutlaws.com. Alright, see you in the next video.